Hey guys, I'm Jack Buzzer, and today I'm going to be compiling a tier list of all the raid exotics in Destiny 2, starting from the Leviathan and ending with the latest raid, Root of Nightmares. So we have a lovely little tier list here that my editor is whipping up, so I haven't seen it yet, but I hope it looks good. Before we get into today's video, I will be streaming the Destiny Final Shape Showcase on the channel here. If you don't want to miss it, there will be a scheduled stream that you can set a reminder for in the description below and in the cards if it lets me do that. But let's get right into it. I'm going to be ranking these exotics based on their PvE performance, not PvP. But let's start with the first raid exotic introduced into Destiny 2, the Legend of Acrius. The Legend of Acrius has gone through periods of being next to useless to now being in a solid position. A go-to weapon choice for the new Ghost of the Deep Dungeon against the first boss Ektar. Because of its sustained damage output, this is mainly because the reload of the Acrius is the same as the delay between shots. So you can reload after every shot without losing any DPS uptime. Plus, its exotic catalyst providing deeper pockets makes this a great exotic. Now, despite its limited shotgun range, there are not many bosses where you can use the full power of the Acrius. However, when compared against other raid exotics, it does perform very well. So I'm going to place the Acrius in A tier, but a low A because of how situational it is. Now, the Eater of Worlds and Spire of Stars raid lairs didn't feature any exotics, so we're jumping straight to Forsaken. The last Wish raid features the 1000 voices. The 1k has gone through its fair share of changes, and if anyone remembers a few years ago, simply equipping the 1k resulted in a bug that boosted all damage by 15%. No one sure how it happened, but it did. While that bug was active, it featured an entire month where every man and his dog was running the 1000 voices. But since then, it has been a pretty tame exotic. The weapon itself isn't amazing when compared to other exotic heavy weapons or just heavy weapons in general, but a recent buff saw the weapon now apply Scorch. I'm gonna rank the 1k as a B tier. Next, we have Scourge of the Past, one of my favorite raids. The exotic is Anarchy. Now, the Anarchy found its place as the DPS King, being able to complement just about any weapon thanks to its damage over time effect. Attaching two grenades to an enemy will see them consistently take damage for about 10 seconds. While the Anarchy isn't the greatest weapon in the current meta, it has always had the potential of coming back into rotation as a solid weapon. I'm going to place this as an A tier for a few reasons. The Anarchy is uniquely designed and opened up DPS cycling to the community. With the right timings and combinations of weapon, it raised the DPS skill gap considerably. But right now, the weapon doesn't perform well enough in-game to be considered an S tier. However, some artifact perks may make this a top tier weapon once again in coming seasons. Next, we have the Terraba from Crown of Sorrow, a solar SMG coming with the exotic perk Ravenous Beast, which turns this weapon into an absolute machine. I used to use this weapon in Gambit when Gambit was actually good to absolutely melt the prime evil. If you're not looking to run a Scorch build using the new solar keyword system, Terraba is one of the better weapons to pick up from the exotic kiosk, thanks to its all-round usability and solar position as a primary weapon. If you need a solar weapon for a solar build, like a Titan solar build to continually increase damage, and you're not looking to spread Scorch from weapon kills like a Warlock would, the Terraba is an excellent choice. Because of its easy usability, reasonably easy to use strong exotic perk, and how easy it is to slot into some builds, I'm gonna rank this weapon an A tier. Next, we have the Garden of Salvation, bringing us the most controversial and originally absolutely busted exotic, the Divinity. Until its nerf, the Divinity was staple in day one raids. Hell, I'm almost sure day one's King Fall was impossible to DPS check the War Priest without the use of Divinity. Even after its nerf, the Divinity's perk of applying 15% damage buff and a giant crit bubble, this weapon is still an absolute king when it comes to raiding with new players or if you're just trying to get through encounters as fast as possible, especially when combined with the new Warlock exotic helmet, Cenotaph's Mask. The Divinity gets the God tier ranking because of its versatility and insane supportive nature, but I wouldn't go running solo with a Divinity. Next, we have Deepstone Crypt's exotic, the Eyes of Tomorrow rocket launcher. Now, the Eyes of Tomorrow did get a buff to reward you for landing enough rockets, and since the rockets track, it's a solid weapon. And you can do some monstrous damage if you can proc the perk, which reads, defeating four or 
more combatants in a single volley, increases the damage of the next volley, and refunds ammunition. Now this is great for killing champions, mini bosses, or just general ad clear. But it does fall short in boss DPS since you're unable to proc the perk. And because of this, I'm gonna place it in a B tier. As in PvE, the weapon does have a bit going for it. It has great ammo economy and even better thanks to the perk and a decent reload speed. It might fall short in raid content when you have a team of guardians firing rockets, but for solo content and nightfalls, I'd absolutely consider taking this as my heavy weapon to take care of the mages, champions, and groups of adds. Next, we have the reprise raid Vault of Glass, with the very first raid exotic Destiny ever saw the Vex Mythoclast. In Destiny 2, the Vex got a slight rework, giving it the ability to turn into a linear fusion rifle after getting a few kills. Plus, with its catalyst, getting kills with the weapon provides a boost to damage, accuracy, and stability, making this a fantastic primary weapon for solar builds. It's well-rounded and easy to take full advantage of its exotic perks and catalyst. The bonuses aren't as good as the Terraba, but that's because it requires nothing more than shooting the weapon. I'm gonna rank it in a B, just below the Terraba. Coming in next, we have the Vow of the Disciple weapon, Collective Obligation. Now, the Collective Obligation originally wasn't well-received, but it didn't scream raiding exotic in the traditional way. It did have a very unique exotic perk, allowing it to leech void debuffs when damaging targets and is auto reloaded when you gain a void buff. This weapon is fantastic to slot into void 3.0 builds, especially when focused on volatile, devour or void overshield keywords. This weapon, especially after the recent pulse rifle buff and exotic primary buff, if you have this in your inventory, I suggest you give it a go. Because of its insane synergy with void 3.0 builds, I'm going to be ranking the collective obligation an A. Next, we have King's Ball, bringing back the Touch of Malice. Now, this weapon, as everyone knows, harms you. Malice. The final shot will take your health down in exchange for a 30% buff and infinite ammo. Each shot your health is lowered, Warlock Rifts will minimize the damage, but not remove it outright. Well of Radiance, on the other hand, will. It also has the Charged with Blight, allowing you to charge up a Ball of Darkness, which applies a debuff to the enemy and blinds them. The Touch of Malice is getting a buff next season. Based on what Bungie has told us, players will be very happy about it. We don't know the specifics right now, but at the moment, because of how difficult the weapon is to use properly, and how hard it is to take full advantage of the exotic perk without dying, especially in harder content, I have to give the Touch of Malice a C. The final raid exotic as of Season 21, the Conditional Finality from the Root of Nightmares raid. This is one of the most unique and interesting raid exotics. It fires two shots, one being Stasis and the other being Solar. The first freezes and the second shot will shatter the target and then ignite them, allowing for some pretty insane special weapon single target damage potential. It is very versatile and can run in a range of activities. It looks very similar to the Super Shotgun from the Doom franchise and it behaves as such. This thing is an absolute monster that can slot into just about any build and it deals insane amounts of single target damage as long as you can get close enough to the target. And because of that, this has to go in the God tier raid exotic. And that's all for today. Let me know what your favorite raid exotic is and let me know what you think the worst one is. If you'd like to connect with me, my Twitch, Twitter and Discord are all in the description below. And until next time, happy raiding, Guardians.